Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, topic for today's class is inherited disorders of membrane transport. I am Dr. Devind Bairwa. I did my DM clinical immunology and uh, immunology from Chipwa. Previously, I worked as senior resident in Department of uh, Hematology Aims, and I did my MD medicine from Aims Delhi, and I did my MBBS from MC. We will be discuss discussing this topic of uh, inherited disorders of membrane transport under following headings. We will first have a brief stimulation. Then we will get introduced to these topic, and then we will discuss some more commoner disorders, uh, uh, specifically cystinuria, lysinuric protein intolerance, citrullinemia type 2, also known as citrine deficiency, heart nap disease, and then we will discuss last cystinosis. So uh, let's get some stimulation about these diseases. So this figure is showing, you can see there are one bottle of Coca-Cola, and one side there is a signature the uh, sign of ola so cola and ola these are mnemonic for two of diseases that that we are going to discuss today we will see for subsequent slides what that, that what does that mean coming to a few questions that will help you uh, make a query in your mind about these diseases let's say this uh, let's see this uh, presentation a patient divorce only non veg diet including chicken mutton fish prawn among others he can also digest fatty meal without any complication. But as soon as he takes any sugar or carbohydrate rich food, he develops altered mental status, irritability, seizures, or coma resembling hepatic encephalopathy, hypertriglyceridemia, or pancreatitis. Some same symptoms he also develops when he takes any alcohol beverages. So, in this case, this guy is most likely suffering from options are A phytanic acid oxygen deficiency, option B, citrullinemia type 2, that is citrine deficiency, C, heart nerve disease, or D, lysinuric protein intolerance. This is second uh, case scenario. A patient presents with the skin lesions as shown in figure and recurrent episodes of diarrhea and other clinical signs of malnutrition. Urinary analysis showed the presence of excessive loss of both neutral and aromatic amino aciduria. This patient is most likely suffering from option A, niacin deficiency, option B, pellagra, option C, heart nerve disease, or option D, acrodermatitis antropathica. There are four statements. Let's see whether they are true or false. First statement is cysteine and cysteine are same. Second statement, cystinuria and homocystinuria are same. Third, pellagra is due to deficiency of HTD. And fourth is Urine acidification prevents cysteine stone formation. So, in subsequent presentation, please try to find out answers for the, these all problems. Uh, so, coming to uh, this, these disorders of uh, membrane transport. So, we all know that there are specific membrane transporters which will mediate the passage of a wide variety of substances across cellular membranes. These substances can be anything amino acids, sugars, cations, anions, vitamins, and water. So because there are so many transporters associated with transport of these molecules, and every day we are searching, we are able to find new transporters. So we are able to know more defects and more diseases. And that's why number of inherited disorders of membrane transport, it continues to increase. There is identification of new transporter, transporters on the plasma membrane or intracellular organelles. In general, because these membrane transporters can be present on any cells, therefore any organs can be affected. But in particular, some organs will show manifestations like involvement of gut, kidney, heart, muscles, brain, endocrine system, and sensory organs. So these are the organs which will commonly show uh, symptoms of these diseases. But any organ or any tissue can be involved with, because of defect of inherited def defect of disorders of membrane transport. So this table is from your Harrison. So you can see in this table they have shown uh, class of substance, class of substance and disorders. Then what substrates substrates are accumulated or lost because of defect? What, where is the defect in tissue? What is the molecular defect? And what are the major clinical manifestation and their pattern of inheritance? So this table is showing defects in amino acids. You can see cystinuria. Cystinuria is having defect in your 
एस एल सी थ्री ए वन और एस एल सेवन ए नाइन बिकॉज ऑफ दिस डिफेक्ट देर इज डिफेक्टिव एब्जॉर्बन ऑफ सिस्टाइन लाइसिन आजिन और नितिन सी ओ एल ए सो कोला कोला वॉज निमोनिक फॉर सिस्टिन यूरिया सो दीज फोर अमाइनो एसिड इंक्लूडिंग सिस्टाइन और नितिन लाइसिन एंड आर्जिन आर नॉट बींग एब्जॉर्ब एंड दे आर बींग लॉस्ट फ्रॉम किडनी एज वेल एज कट बिकॉज दिस लॉस ऑफ दिस सिस्टाइन फ्रॉम किडनी इन ट्यूब्यूल्स इट जनरली प्रेजेंस विद सिस्टाइन नेफ्रोलिथियासिस देन वी हैव लाइसिन प्रोटीन इन रोलिस it is also known as diabetic amino acid urea and you can see the defect lies with your diabetic transporter slc7a7 and because of this defect there is reduced absorption of ornithine lysine and arginine it means ola so ola is mnemonic for your lysinuric protein intolerance so this disease commonly presents with protein intolerance hyperammonemia and intellectual disabilities similarly we have heart nap disease heart nap disease there is defect in absorption of your neutral amino acids so these neutral amino acids are being absorbed with the help of slc 6a19 when the defect is there there is so much loss of these neutral amino acids in your kidney and gut generally this disease can uh, present with constant neutral amino acid urea and intermittent in terms of pelaga then there is defect defect in branch uh, chain amino acid deficiency this there is a defect in branch chain amino acid transporter slc7a5 because of this defect there is no absorption of leucine as leucine by in the brain tissue it leads to microcephaly intellectual disability and seizures citrullinemia type 2 there is defect in your mitochondrial aspartate glutamate carrier 2 and because of this defect there is uh, aspartate glutamate and malate cannot be uh, transported across mitochondrial membrane and this disease generally present with sudden behavior changes with stupor coma and hyperammonemia then we have other diseases like hyperornithinemia hyperammonemia homocytulinemia there is defect in with the handling of ornithine citrulline because of defect in mitochondrial ornithine carrier this also present with symptoms of vomiting lethargy failure to thrive intellectual disability episodic confusion hyperammonemia and protein intolerance then we have histidinuria this is there is defect specific for histidine only Uh, if you see in heart nap disease also there is defect in histidine but defect in histidine is specific to histidine whether in case of heart nap disease there are other neutral amino acids are also involved defect in histidine transporter it leads to deficient histidine generally it presents with intellectual disability there are some other diseases like immunoglycosuria these immuno group containing amino acids like glycine proline hydroxyproline these are these are defective there because of defect in your shared glycine amino acid transporter but in general there are no any major clinical manifestation because of it then dicarboxylic amino acid urea as we know glutamic acid and aspartic acid both of these amino acids have two carboxylic group so there is defect in their transporter and this disease also does not have any major clinical manifestation cystinosis cystinosis and cystinuria you have to understand that cystinuria there is defect in your transporter across kidney and gut because of that there is loss of these cola amino acids but in case of cystinosis this is basically because of defect in a lysosomal membrane so what happens because there is a defect in lysosomal transporter this cystine will get accumulated in your lysosome and it will be converted to cystine and it will accumulate there once it accumulates there then tissue function is lost generally this disease presents as renal failure hypothyroidism or blindness because of collection of these crystals of cystine in your cornea all these diseases are generally inherited as autosomal recessive pattern then coming to these main three diseases cystinuria all already we discussed this deficiency of this cola amino acid cystine or nitin lysine arginine in case of your lysinuric protein intolerance there is defect in ornithine lysine arginine cystine is not defective in case of cystinosis cystine accumulates in your lysosomes then there are disorders associated with hexoses include glucose galactose malabsorption because of defect in your sodium dependent sglt1 transporter or glucose transport defect because of faculty faculty to glucose transporter 
or there is Fanconi Bickel syndrome because of defect in your faculty glucose transporter GLUT2. So, Fanconi Bickel syndrome is because of GLUT2. These disorders can present as watery diarrhea or feeding these carbohydrate rich diets, including glucose, lactose, sucrose, and lactose. And they can have seizures, intellectual disabilities, growth retardation, rickets, they can have or they can have hyperterine glycogenesis and hypo and hyperglycemia episodes. Mm -hmm. Then coming to defect in urate transporter, this we have discussed in the class of hyperuricemia. If there is defect in urate transporter, urate 1, that is involved in reabsorption of uric acid from proximal tubules, inner tubules, then we can have so much loss of uric acid causing hyperuricemia. These patients generally have hyperuricemia and they can sometimes have uric acid urolithiasis. Apart from this, there are no major known clinical manifestation of this disease. Coming to disorders associated with vitamins, we have thiamine responsive megaloblastic anemia. There is defect in thiamine transporter. So these patients present with features of megaloblastic anemia, deafness, and diabetes mellitus. Uh, this disease will respond to thiamine supplementation. Then we have biotin thiamine responsive basal ganglia disease. So there's this transporter which is there in the basal ganglia tissue. Biotin thiamine transporter is defective. And because of that, there can be, it can present like dystonia, seizures, psychomotor delay, and vernicular like encephalopathy. Then there can be defective riboflavin transporter deficiency. Riboflavin, we know, is an essential vitamin. If it is not available, it presents like ataxia, weakness, neuropathy, and hearing loss. Then there are carnitine deficiency and creatine deficiency. Carnitine is basically involved mostly in kidney, muscle, and heart. And your creatine is required for your brain. If this defect in these specific transporters, they may present like carnitine deficiency can present with hypoketotic hypoglycemia, cardiomyopathy, sudden death. And creatine deficiency is the only disorder which is excellent in these disorders. And it generally presents with intellectual disability, seizures, and hypotonia. So let's see some more common diseases in detail. First, we will discuss about cystinuria. So cystinuria is as such I we discussed, it is an autosomal recessive disease. It is not very common. One, one in 10,000 to 50,000 cases seen. And this defective transport, trans, this defective transporter in the proximal collectible of kidney and jejunum. And because of this defect, there is impaired reabsorption and excessive urinary excretion of dibasic amino acids, including cola, cysteine, cysteine, ornithine, lysine, and arginine. Then the problem that occurs clinically is because of this cysteine, because this cysteine is poorly soluble in water. And because of its poor, poor solubility and so much excretion in the urine, there can be formation of renal, urethral, or bladder stones. Types, there are two kinds of diseases, type 1 disease and type non-type 1 disease. Earlier, they used to have type 2 and type 3 disease, but later on, they found that both type 2 and type 3 disease have defect in the same uh, molecule. Now we have type 1 and non-type 1 disease. Type 1 disease is because of defect in SLC3A1 and non-type 1 is SLC7A9. 3 comes before 7, so you can remember like SLC3A1 for type 1 and SLC7A9 for the non-type 1. So in homozygous cases of both type 1 and non-type 1, there is increased excretion of these cola amino acids. But in case of heterozygous involvement in type 1 disease, there can be normal excretion. And in case of your non-type 1, there is moderately increased excretion. If you see these molecules are actually involved together in transport of these amino acids, that is how defect in both of them generally presents in a similar way. Coming to the clinical presentation, overall cystine stones, if we see, out of all the urinary calculi, only 1-2% to 2 of stones are cystine stones. But most common cause of stones in children is because of cystinuria. And maximum solubility of cystine, that is normal urine, is 300 mg per liter. Normal cystine excretion in cystinuria patient is 600 to 1800 mg uh, per day. So what happens now we can see here because one liter of urine can only accommodate 300 milligram of cystine. To excrete 600 to 1800 milligram of cystine in a normal day, patient is required to produce 2 to 6 liter of 
urine that is generally not possible or not happens that's how they will have less urinary volume and more concentration of cysteine solubility will reduce and there will be precipitation of these cysteine stones in the urinary tract but this stone formation generally usually present only second or third decade reason not known and symptoms and signs are because of mostly of these stones that can lead to hematuria flank pain renal colic obstructive uropathy and infections in patients who will develop recurrent urolithiasis they can they can ultimately develop progressive insufficiency lab findings so what we see there can be presence of typical hexagonal crystals in the sediment of acid acidified concentrated chilled urine or you can go for a urinary nitroprusside test or you can go for a quantitative urine amino acid analysis if you find presence of this stain or anything lies in arginine you can it can actually confirm your diagnosis uh, there will be selective over excretion of these cola amino acids and quantity measurement is important because it can differentiate your heterozygotes from homozygotes as we have discussed few heterozygote people can have normal or only moderately increased excretion but in case of your homozygous patient they absolutely have higher excretion of these amino acids and once you start these patients for therapy then you can follow the impact of therapy with the help of cysteine excretion during therapy so this is how your hexagonal crystals of cysteine appear in urine you can see these hexagonal crystals they are typical or you can say like a uh, pectinogenic feature of cystinuria if these crystals are present in patient with urinary stone mostly you are dealing with the cystine stone patient with cystinuria now this cystine versus cystine whether they are same or di different so if you see cystine is a single amino acid molecule cystine is nothing but as we can see there is a sulfur hydryl group in this cystine and this sulfur hydryl group is relatively free so what happens when there is increased concentration of cystine two molecules of cystine can bind with each other like this you can see this is a disulfide bond and because of it it can form form cysteine so cysteine cysteine it doesn't matter structure is different but both will be seen in your disease of cystinuria okay so something about urinary nitroprusside test if you remember we read about this test when we used to read about uh, keto acidosis in diabetes patients principle of test is that what happens now we have seen that our cysteine amino acid is having a free sulfur hydryl group so this reaction is actually identifying presence of the sulfur hydryl group free sulfur hydryl group in amino acid or cysteine amino acid in a protein so this is actually specific to cysteine because although there are some amino acid having this ss group like methionine but in those amino acids it is not free for reaction but the ss group of cysteine is relatively free and it can be used in reaction so this reaction is specific to cysteine but but not to proteins and if you remember ketones also can show this reaction so we cannot say that this is a pathognomonic test for cysteine as it can be positive in other things then what happens once you apply strong alkali then this sulfur hydride group is released from your cysteine and it is available for your reaction once the sulfur is free then the sulfur reacts with your nitroprusside ion and once this nitroprusside ion reacts with sulfur of sulfur hydride group it will form a complex which will be red color compound so you can see formation of red color compound in that reaction it will show that uh, this presence of cysteine so you can see when you do a nitroprusside test in the presence of free sulfur hydride group which is most commonly coming from your cysteine you will have a formation of red color complex at last and it uh, shows that there is cysteine increased cysteine in your uh, urine but because this reaction can be positive because of other things cysteine cysteine both will show because this cysteine also once you heat that solution you heat the urine cysteine will broken down to cysteine and then it can show reaction and patients of your uh, ketonuria they will also show this positive reaction so this positive nitroprusside reaction is not specific for your cystinuria management the goal of therapy in cystinuria is to prevent cystic crystal formation by increasing urinary volume and ph 
simple thing is increase unit unit excretion, increase unit volume, or you get alkalinize the urine. So in these patients, fluid ingestion is to be increased in excess of more than four liters per day is essential. And if it possible, should be maintained between five to seven liters per day. Unit cysteine concentration should be kept less than 250 milligram per liter. And this fluid ingestion when is being taken should be spaced over 24 hours with one third volume should be taken between bedtime and 3 a.m. Because once the patient sleeps, after that, the next water uh, he's having in the morning only and there is a time when there will be more chances of your crystallization of cysteine. So fluid has to be divided into 24 hours with one third volume to be taken between bedtime and 3 a.m. And cysteine solubility actually increases once pH goes beyond 7.5. So urine can be alkalinized with the help of bicarbonate or potent citrate, and it can also be therapeutic modality in this disease. Apart from that, what we can do, we can provide these penicillamine or diaponin. They have the sulfhydryl group. So what happens? There is a, there is a sulfhydryl sulfide exchange with cysteine to form mixed disulfides. So this penicillamine and tioponin these two molecules will react with your cysteine molecules and they will form a compound known as mixed disulfide. These mixed disulfide, they have much more solubility than cysteine, so there will be less of crystal formation. That's how it will reduce your stone formation. But problem with these drugs is tyaponin is, is okay, but penicillamine is a drug with much side effects. It can have uh, some serious side effects and that is why it should be reserved for patients who fail to respond to hydration alone or who are in a high risk category, like patient with only one kidney, patient having insufficiency. In these patients, as a desperate measure, you can try penicillin. So when medical management fails, like patient has already developed stones, then you can go with shock wave mitotripsy. Cystine stones are very hard stones. You can also go with retroscopy. Percutaneous nephrotectomy can be tried. Open. Surgery is indicated in, case, in cases of complex tachyon stones, which are not amenable to above mentioned uh, modalities, or patient has concomitant renal or uterine abnormalities, then open urology surgery can be considered. Patient mm -hmm. who had developed uh, CKD because of uh, progressive disease or recurrent disease can be considered for kidney transplantation. Coming to lysinuric protein intolerance. So as we already have seen, cystinuria, cola amino acids, in case of your lysinuric protein intolerance, ola amino acids, so ornithin, lysine, and arginine, they are being uh, executed in much more amount in this disease. There is a defective gene of SLC7A7 on chromosome 14. This disease is, in as such, it is disease is rare, but it is most commonly seen in Finland, Southern Italy, and Japan. Otherwise, it is rare there. And this protein is not present on the apical uh, portion of your PCT cells. It is uh, indeed present on your vasoletal area, rather than liminal membrane transport. So what happens? There is there are two defects of this thing because this ornithine and arginine they are being lost because of loss of this thing. What happens? There is an impairment of urea cycle. Impairment of urea cycle means that patient will have difficulty in handling protein load. And because of this eucycle defect, there can be immune dysfunction. Immune dysfunction is actually attributable to increased production of nitric oxide, secondary to arginine intracellular trapping within macrophages. So this can lead to some immunodeficiency like features. Clinical features, childhood presentation, generally they present with hepatitis pneumogaly. They will have difficulty in handling protein. They will have protein intolerance. They can have episodic ammonia intoxication. In older patients, they present with severe osteoporosis, impairment of kidney functions, pulmonary alveolar proteinosis, various autoimmune disorders. And as we discussed, because they have some immune defect, they can have some undefined immune deficiency like features. Left lab finding, we will see that they will have a reduced plasma concentration of OLA, ornithine, lysine, and arginine. They will have increased urinary excretion of lysine and orotic acid. Orotic acid actually forms from ornithine by various pathways. And hyperammonemia may develop after the ingestion of protein loads or with infections. Uh, probably because of insufficient amount of arginine and ornithine to maintain proper function of urea cycle, this protein cannot be handled and it will lead to hyperammonemia. Management. So dietary protein restriction can be helpful. 
Supplementation of citrulline can be there. Citrulline can be given two to eight gram per day. It is a neutral amino acid. And in the absence of your uh, arginine and ornithin, this citrulline will be utilized because if you remember that urea cycle, in that urea cycle, ultimately those two amino acids will be citrulline. So this citrulline can be supplemented. It will be used as a fuel in urea cycle and it will be metabolized to arginine and ornithine. Then when these patients have pulmonary disease, you can use steroids or you can use recombinant human GMCSF. We, we know that these both it leads to increase in production of your surfactant in the lung. One of the findings of this disease was pulmonary uh, alveolar proteinosis that basically happens because of deficiency of your surfactant that can be treated with the help of steroids. Then women with this disease uh, who become pregnant, they have increased risk of anemia, toxemia, toxemia and bleeding complication during delivery. And that can be minimized by aggressive nutrient therapy, protein restriction, and with the adequate control of blood pressure. Their infants are generally normal, but they can have intrauterine growth restriction. But in general, their neurology function is normal. Coming to citrullinemia type 2, that is also known as citrine deficiency. So this citrullinemia is because of high level citrulline, and the citrine is name of the protein which is involved in the transport of the citrulline. So we'll see. So it is an autosomal resistant condition. There is deficiency of mitochondrial aspartate glutamate carrier, AGC2, which is also known as citrine. And because of this deficiency of this work of this carrier, there is reduced availability of cytoplasmic aspartate to combine with citrulline to form R2 succinate. So if you remember, this actually is a part of urea cycle. So what happens? There is if there is deficiency of this uh, aspartate, there is uh, functional deficiency of citrulline, then there will be less formation of R genosuccinate. Once this molecule doesn't form, then urocycle will not proceed further. So there will be an impairing of the urocycle and decrease, it will decrease transfer of reducing equivalents from cytosol to the mitochondria through the mallet as part NAD subtle. So basic, basic problem is that there is defect in your urocycle and defect in your mitochondrial function. Mutation in your SLC 25A13 gene. And it, this disease, as such, is rare in Caucasian population. We don't have out of India. But this disease is most commonly seen in your ancestry from Japan, China, and Southeast Asia. But they have very variable penetrance. Generally, in childhood, these patients present with neonatal intrahepatic cholestasis, failure to thrive. They can have dyslipidemia. But most patients, they present in the older age adult age, usual presentation is like sudden onset between 20 and 50 years of age with recurring episodes of hyperaminemia. They can have associated psychiatric symptoms like altered mental status, irritability, seizures, or coma resembling hepatic and chemopathy. They can also develop feature of hypertriglycidemia because of dyslipidemia, pancreatitis, hepatoma, and they can have fatty liver findings. On biopsy, they, it appears similar to NASH finding, non-alcoholic hepatitis like findings. And if these patients are not provided therapy, most patients die because of cerebral edema within a few years of onset. So these patients have disease in generally adult age group, but this disease presents episodically. And these episodes are usually triggered by medication such as acetaminophen, surgeries, alcohol consumption, or higher sugar intake, causing excesses causing excess NADH production. Now, remember that we have discussed in the pathway that if this NADH production is high and the defect in the mallet shuttle, so what will happen? This NADH more production will be detrimental to these patients. So NADH is not generated by the metabolism of protein or fats. And many individuals with citrulline type 2, spontaneously, they will prefer food such as meat, eggs, and fish, and avoid carbohydrates. So the point is that these patients will be able to eat, digest, and handle anything protein and fat. But when they take high amount of carbohydrate, they will develop these symptoms of new psychiatric uh, domain and other features that can happen there. Lab findings, laboratory studies will be generally normal, but during an attack, if these studies are done, then they can show elevated ammonia levels, elevated citrulline level, elevated arginine level, and they will have a low or normal level of glutamine because if you 
Now remember this point that glutamine is usually increase in classic defect of urea cycle, but this defect is not in urea cycle. This defect is prior to that. So if you see this glutamine level, glutamine level can actually help you differentiate urea cycle defects from your citrine deficiency. Then there can be increase in level of galactose one phosphate in the RBC. Reflecting defective transfer reducing equivalent from the cytos to mitochondria. So, what happened because of that NADH defect is there? Because of that defect, there is increased galactose 1 phosphate in RBCs. Diagnosis is generally confirmed by demonstrating mutation in your specific cell C25A13 gene. Management, long term management will be liver transplantation because we know that defect is the liver only. So, liver transplantation prevents progression of the disease and it normalizes biochemical parameters. In short term, what can be done? In short term, patient can be given, given high diet, high in fats and proteins and low in carbohydrates with supplements of medium chain triglycerides, arginine and pyruvate. This can be effective in preventing further episodes in short term. But in long term, most of these patients will require liver transplantation. Coming to heart nerve disease. Now, this uh, heart nerve disease is less common frequency of 1 in 25,000 of uh, people and defect is generally on SL, in SLC 6A19 gene. Disorders, disorder is autosomal recessive and generally it presents like pellagra like skin lesions. So now you remember that pellagra is basically because of deficiency here in your niacin and nicotinic acid. This niacin and nicotinic acid is formed from tryptophan. Tryptophan, now in this disease of heart nerve, there is defect in your uh, excretion of. Uh, uh, aromatic amino acids and uh, neutral amino acids. So, tryptophan is also lost and that, that's how this disease is present like, like, like skin lesions. Apart from that, these patients can have variable uh, neurological manifestations. In this disease, there is amino acid urea involving both neutral and aromatic, uh, aromatic amino acids. So, amino acids which are being excreted more than five to ten times of normal limit includes alanine, serine, threonine, valine, leucine, isoleucine, phenylalanine, tyrosine, tryptophan, glutamine, aspartame, and histidine. Out of these amino acids, because of tryptophan deficiency, there is deficiency in nicotinic, nicotinic acid, niacin, and because of that defect, this patient present with like polyrelic -like skin lesions. This new, this uh, variable manifestation of neurological system. Uh, because of this tryptophan or, or the other amino acid, it is not known as it now. So, the defect is also there apart from in the kidney, the defect is also there in the gut. And because of defect in the gut, all these amino acids are not being absorbed. Clinically, these patients, they can present with neutral deficiency, neutral deficiency of these essential amino acid uh, like tryptophan. And it is caused because of caused by because there is an intestinal uh, impaired resorption, resorption and there is a defect in renal absorption. And because of this thing, there is defect, there is deficiency in niacin and niacin as we know is, prevent, is produced from your tryptophan and because of tryptophan deficiency, there is a functional niacin deficiency. Only a small fraction of these patients will develop this like syndrome. So as you know, the understanding is, is that, that this deficiency of tryptophan is only one of the uh, factors. There may be some other known, not, no, not known factors right now, which can lead to uh, this pillar-like syndrome. And that is how only a small fraction of patients will develop these symptoms. Diagnosis should be suspected in any patients with clinical features of pellagra who does not have a history of dietary nitrogen deficiency. Uh, in neurological and psychiatric manifestation, these patients can have attacks of ataxia, cerebrataxia, mild emotional lability, they can have frank delirium, they can have any kind of uh, serious manifestation and when these patients have this manifestation, these manifestations are generally accompanied by exacerbation of the erythematous eczematoid pelagic like skin rash. Generally, these attacks are precipitated by fever, sunlight, stress, and sometimes drug therapy, most commonly sulfonamides. So this table is important because now we know that in case of your niacin deficiency, there will be pellagra-like lesion. In case of heart knob disease, we are seeing that there is pellagra-like lesion. So how do you differentiate between these two disease lab-wise? So if you see in your niacin deficiency, there is a defect in, there will be aromatic amino acid urea. 
but in case of your heart lung disease there will be loss of both aromatic as well as neutral amino acid urea so if a patient with pelagic like pelagic like skin lesion presents with presence of both aromatic and neutral uh, amino acid losing urine then probably you are dealing with a disease of heart lung management so what you can do you can still re replace uh, replace niacin in this patient you can provide high protein diet because as you can see some 10 12 amino acids are being lost in your urine provide them high protein diet and daily daily nicotinamide supplements can be done from 52 to 50 mg per day uh, and with the therapy most of the patient they improve coming to cystinosis so as we discussed already, cystinuria defect was in kidney and gut, cystinosis defect in your lysosome. So cystinosis is very rare disease with frequency of 1 per lakh to 1 per 2 lakh population. Autosomal recessive disease and mutation is in the CTNS gene. The CTNS gene is encoding a protein, a transporter protein, lysosomal cysteine proton transport, transporter known as cystinosis. And that's why the, this is known as cystinosis. So because of this defect, what happens because of this basic defect of this CTNS gene, cysteine, cysteine derived from protein degradation accumulates inside lysosomes and forms crystal due to its poor solubility. So all these proteins which has to be degraded, it is taken by cells, then it goes to lysosome. In the lysosome, it is degraded and after degradation, it is released outside. This cystinosin is the transporter which is involved in transport of this cysteine molecule. It is defective, so what it will lead to? It will lead to collection of cysteine in your lysosomes. Cysteine is very, very weak solubility it has. So multiple molecules accumulated, they will crystallize in your lysosome and cell will ultimately have a high load of cysteine and that's how we need to cell death. That is the basic defect in this disease. Clinical features, this disease, it presents in three different forms. We have one classic nephropathic cystinosis, then we have an intermediate nephropathic cystinosis, and then we have ocular non-nephropathic cystinosis. This is most severe form, this is least severe form. In classic nephropathic cystinosis, generally this disease present uh, early uh, in the age, and generally it presents with renal funkel syndrome, funkel syndrome during the first year of life. And without treatment, most of the patients, they will evolve to renal failure, usually by 10 years of age. So these patients will have your amino acid urea, glucose urea, and all those features of your type 2 renal tubular cystosis uh, like features. In case of intermediate nephropathic cystinosis, kidney failure occurs, but it occurs a little late, between 15 and 25 years of age. In case of your ocular non-nephropathic cystinosis, these patients as they generally do not do not have any kind of kidney involvement, but these patients will have only involvement of eyes. So what happens? There will be photophobia, and this photophobia and bloody go present is caused by deposition of cystine crystals in the cornea, and generally this is the sole manifestation in this subtype of the disease. Left findings, as you can see in uh, in this uh, figure. That this cornea, if you see these the multiple small shiny crystals of cystine are accumulated in your cor uh, in, uh, on your cornea, and these uh, uh, cystine crystals can be identified with the help of slit lamp examination. Then, apart from that, what we can do, we can uh, see level of uh, cystine content of white blood cells. It will be increased in case of cystinosis. Or we can go for our DNA study, DNA testing, including a deletion analysis of the CTNS gene. So these are the methods uh, by which we can confirm cystinosis. Management. So in this disease, we are giving cystiamine. cystiamine. So this cystiamine is what? Administration of cystiamine, it enters lysosome. Then it will form a mixed disulfide with cystine. So remember, like as we were treating a cystinuria, if you provide this cystiamine, the system will go to your lysosome. It will form uh, bonds with your uh, cysteine and cysteine molecules. Formation of mixed disulfide will be there. These mixed disulfide will be more soluble, and that's how there will be less of crystal formation. And these mixed disulfide will be uh, exported out of lysosome using a cationic amino acid transporter. So oral system therapy is generally given 60 to 90 milligram per kg per day, up to 2 gram per day can be given in adults. 
in case of children 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 gram per meter square per day is given in divided uh, two doses every 12 hours for accelerated release uh, formulation uh, if you provide this therapy it can delay renal failure and it is more effective if start early in the course of disease if you start late all it damages there so it will probably not be that efficient uh, therapy with system in it also reduces your intracellular system accumulation of white blood cells. So what you can do once you start therapy, you can uh, follow the effect of therapy with the help of estimation of cystine levels of your white blood cells in the blood. But problem is there that this drug is actually it is it has very unpleasant odor and you have to give it frequently either just two times or three times and for long term. These are, the, these are the problems with this drug. Otherwise, this drug can help manage these patients. Uh, for eye, as we have seen that this chronic moment, systemic drops are there, systemic uh, eye drops are there. If it is given, it can relieve photophobia. Uh, renal replacement therapy with salt, alkali, and activated vitamin D is necessary because, as we have seen, that these patients present with type 2 RT like feature, Pankini syndrome. So you have to provide salt, alkali, and vitamin D because these are all these all are being lost from the kidney. And then cysteine actually can accumulate virtually in every organ of the body and tissue of the body. It can cause other complications like hypothyroidism, hypohidrosis, diabetes, blood puberty in both males and females with primary hypogonadism in males. So what you can do if any of these tissues involved, and because of that there is defect, so you have to provide. Uh, growth hormone replacement or thyroxine for hypothyroidism, insulin to be needed for diabetes, and testosterone can be given in case of hypogonadism in males. So basically, you have to see what all tissues are affected. If uh, there is endocrine involvement, then you have to go for replacement therapy of these hormones. Now coming, now this is the end of the discussion. Now coming back to the problems. Now we know that. These COLA and OLA, they are actually mentioning two diseases of uh, uh, membrane transport. This COLA is for cystinuria. We have defect in cysteine, ornithine, lysine, and arginine. In case of your lysine protein intolerance, there is defect in ornithine, lysine, and arginine. So COLA, OLA, cystinuria, lysine protein intolerance. Coming to the problems again, this patient who was having this non veg diet, chicken, mutton, fish, prawn, other things, and was also comfortable with fatty meal, but was having problem when he used to take any sugar or carbohydrate food, developing this altered mental status, irritability, and other findings of CNS involvement. And now you can see in this, picture, in this, in this problem that uh, same symptoms may also develop when he was taking alcohol. Uh, we have seen citrullinemia type 2 protein. They cannot handle this sugar and carbohydrate because of increase in NADH and there is a defect in that mallet shutter. So mostly this patient is suffering from citrullinemia type 2, citrine deficiency. Then coming to the other problem, as we can see, this rash is typical of pellagra, generally happens on hands and in the necklace area, necklace of niacin deficiency. But the hint in this problem is that urinary analysis was showing presence of both neutral and aromatic aminosuria. So in case of your niacin deficiency in pellagra, generally there is aromatic aminosuria, but in case of heart nerve disease, they are defecting both neutral and aromatic aminosuria. So answer in this problem is heart nerve disease. Coming to true or false statement, cysteine and cysteine are same. Cysteine and cysteine are, cysteine and cysteine are not same although they like one is the precursor of the other. So this statement is false. Cysteine, two molecules of, two molecules of cysteine, when they uh, are bound with the disulfide bone, they form cysteine molecules. And in case of cysteinuria, because of increase in cysteine, it will be converted to cysteine. But these both molecules are actually different. Coming to cysteinuria and homocysteinuria are same. Cystinuria, we know the defect was something else. Defect was there in your transport. Homocystinuria is a disorder of lysosome. So what will be there? There will be collection of this homocysteine. Pellagra is due to deficiency of histidine. No, pellagra is basically because deficiency of your niacin or if niacin is 
not there or niacin even niacin is there then tryptophan deficiency will lead to niacin deficiency and the niacin deficiency lead to pellagra so histidine is not involved in the pellagra uh, pathway urine acidification prevents cysteine stone formation no answer is urine alkalinization will prevent cysteine formation as we have seen that when ph of urine increases more than 7.5 then there will be uh, increased solubility of uh, your cysteine in your uh, urine. That's how during alkalinization with the help of either bicarbonate therapy or potentiated therapy is used in case of your cystinuria patient. So that's it for today.